Well, everyone, I'm here with Trav and with Barry Roots and with Ian, and we're just having a chat about our church name. Uh, now, Trav, we've already got a church name. Um, what is it? Uh, the Anglican Parish of Glenmore Park and Mulgoa. The Anglican Parish of Glenmore Park and Mulgoa. Yep. Uh, and uh, Barry, uh, that name's not going to work for us into the future. Why is that? Well, let's be clear that I think it did work. It worked very well when we were a parish of two churches, uh, but with the building of the church at Silverdale, it then becomes a very complicated name if you just add Silverdale to the name of the parish. And I would remind everyone, we actually have a fourth church in our parish, and that's at Ludnam. Mm. So to continue with the name that's just based on the geography of the four different churches would be a most a burdensome name mm. to carry as a parish. So it was time, once we were moving from two churches to three, to consider a new name for our church. Yeah, yeah. particularly I was, uh, our Silverdale on Friday and I saw the big fence there and uh, I was just thinking we really want to have a name there and it's no good having the name Glenmore Park Anglican Church there or Glenmore Park and Mulgoa Anglican Church uh, sitting on a, a church building in Silverdale. Uh, so um, really need to be, uh, we need to be thinking about this. Um, Ian, how long has the church been thinking about this as a, something that needs to be um, you know, discussed and, and solved? Really over um, that early period, Chris, of 2019, um, John Lavender uh, put it, uh, just as you've explained it actually, Barry, that uh, we were going to be ultimately one church in three locations. And Glenmore Park Anglican Church didn't suit if you were worshiping in Silverdale or potentially a lot further down the track. So the process of ruling that out was to discuss it with uh, our church committee. Uh, the idea was to come up with a name that was appropriate to initially the two churches, the new church plant at uh, Silverdale, and uh, eventually further down the track, the, the church at uh, Ludnam. And uh, never easy picking a name. Uh, hard enough picking a name for a child, never mind a, mm, mm. Uh, a parish of some six, seven, 700 people. Um, so we put together some options of names and uh, let's say we arrived at a short list, which is what we're discussing probably now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before we get into that short list and uh, the discussion that's happened there, uh, Trav, what's in a name? You know, in one sense we've had a name and so this is actually a change and so you think there's actually history, there's history associated with... St Thomas's Mongoa, there's history associated with Glenmore Park Anglican Church or GPAC, um, you know, so there's a change involved here. Uh, but um, when, when we think about a name, how should we be thinking about that? Because, uh, you know, we get used to a name and it's hard to imagine changing it. Uh, you know, each one of us has a name. It's kind of like I'm, I'm Chris and it's a bit hard to imagine myself with a different name. Uh, you know, how should we think about this when we think about a name? Yeah, I mean, part of that's tied up into identity and, uh, you know, what people would say of themselves and belonging. And so, um, yeah, there's, there's going to be uh, loss and there's going to be difficulty uh, with that when you're adopting a new name. But in terms of uh, as a church and what we use the name for, uh, the church is, uh, the name is what we sort of infuse into it in that sense. I mean, you see brands and names that we use every day that don't really say anything or mean anything in and of themselves. I think I was sharing with you the other day that we have Westfield and it's it says nothing about what it is as a shopping centre. It's not a big field. It's a it's a big complex. Yeah, particularly and not a Bondi Junction. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and they're in the eastern suburbs as well. So <laughs> Westfield, what does that even yeah. mean? And so uh, what it is, a name is something that you infuse into it with meaning and purpose. Um, now, obviously, when we're thinking about a name for a church, we want it to be able to say something itself. And so... We might be discussing that in a minute about the names that we've kind of arrived towards and that journey there. But the name and, and what it stands for is what we want other people to be saying about us as a church. You know, if you go to such and such church, it's what comes after that. You know, what kind of a church is it? What do they believe? What do they teach? Why do you go there? Um, and so, you know, we all have names that we think are great and names that we think are not so great. Um, but yeah, w what's in a name is the way that we infuse it with that value and mm, that meaning mm, that, mm. that we put into it as we talk about our church and as other people talk about our church. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my brother, my brother-in-law goes to EV Church, and you think, where did the name EV come from? What does that mean? And obviously, it has to do with their history and being evangelical, and uh, then you know, kind of need to explain that in some ways. Um, but they've infused that with meaning. You know, kind of what's EV Church? Well, it is uh, that that experience of, of those people gathered up there in the Central Coast. Um, and it's, it's a tough one because when you think about that area, like often, you know, you kind of name a church. Uh, in one sense, we could think about that area extending from here down south. Um, uh, why has that been difficult to think up uh, a name for that area? Why, why didn't we just land on something really obvious? You know, I don't know the answer to that question, Chris. I really don't. As you, you go and ask three, four hundred people uh, of the names of uh, the name of a church to try and combine everything that uh, uh, we live for and move towards as Christian people, you're not going to get everybody on board. Uh, you'll, you might have 50, 100 people come up with one name and another 100 people just don't like it at all. But what we moved towards was to try to find a name which encompass what, where we are, I think location-wise, and I think Trav is alluding to that, uh, and what we stand for as Christian people, uh, that uh, we've received good grace from our, our Heavenly Father through the Lord Jesus, and we want to encompass those things and the locations uh, that, that we find ourselves mm. in the western part of Sydney. Mm. Now, I know you guys went through that process as a church committee last year and you, uh, kind of bubbling to the top of the list were two names. One was uh, Grace Anglican Church and another one was Trinity Anglican Church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of where I think um, John Lavender, uh, when I caught up with him, he said, Chris, uh, you know, here are a few things that need to happen. And one of them, he didn't mention the pandemic, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he did share how this is one of the issues that we need to uh, really solve in the time frame, thinking about building the church at Silverdale. Uh, and conscious that, you know, they're the two names that kind of bubbled to the surface. And I remember one, one day I sat down and I was thinking, yeah, Grace, Grace Anglican Church, that's the one that to- topped the list, as it were. Mm. And uh, playing around with that, I thought, oh, yeah, the G and Glenmore Park, and it wouldn't be great to have a kind of a P word that went with that, uh, maintain the G-Pack kind of thing that's been around. Uh, but uh, nothing bubbled to the surface there in my mind, you know, as I talked with people. Uh, and I actually got thinking about websites because... Grace Church or Grace Anglican Church, you, to tell you what, you don't get a good website. And uh, I, I was kicking around some ideas and uh, there was one morning I had this idea of Grace West and I checked out the website and I really like Trav's website, which is gpa.church. That dot .church thing really is really excellent. It's the shortest email address I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, I checked to see if, you know, it is Grace West dot church there uh, is kind of an abbreviation for Grace West Anglican Church uh, and it was so I thought we'll invest 60 bucks in this decision uh, Trav got the URL that morning uh, in one sense um, a few other things have happened since then but uh, Ian I think I gave you a call and Barry gave you a call that morning mm-hmm. and I said I've, I've had an idea what do you think um, and wh- how did you respond? Look again at uh, the, the name Grace, Grace West Anglican Grace Church. Grace West yep. encompasses uh, what we are in terms of uh, our people of grace uh, under God's grace. Uh, we are in the West. Yeah. And as, uh, I think it's essential that it has the word Anglican in it, identifies who we are and the heritage of, uh, uh, of our people as, uh, uh, as Christian pe- people uh, under the, uh, the Anglican banner, if you like, uh, in Sydney. Mm-hmm. And Barry? When uh, the church committee raised this last year, I struggled for a long time trying to come up with a geographical name. Um, My interest and expertise in education was in geography and given the distances between these churches and the geographical differences that exist between the different churches within the parish, I came to a a dead end. (laughs) I just could not find a name geographically that was localised that would suit all four churches. And I'm sure there were other people in the church who were going through all sorts of different sort of uh, processes to come up with the physical geographical name. So when you contacted me and said West, it was blatantly obvious that West is where we are and West is where the churches are and it seemed to me to be a perfect geographical name to add to a word that epitomises what Christian churches are all about. Um, So to be a Grace West Anglican church to me seemed to hit the nail on the head. It was interesting, there was never a discussion that the word Anglican would not be part of our name. Mm -hmm. It is who we are and we enjoy the fact 
that the word Anglican means Bible-believing, gospel-focused, evangelical in approach, mission-minded, all the words that we associate with a church that we as Anglicans would want to be part of. So then you put Grace and West and Anglican together and I think it's about as good as we could get. And it's, I think it's going to grow on us. I think that's one thing that Travis shared with us that, uh, you know, you, you kind of, uh, you start somewhere and you think, oh, I'm not sure. And then I know I've been sitting with it for a few months now, uh, but people listening to this, this might be their first time. Uh, so they might have to, you know, kind of sit with it for a little while. I know that since then I've had the opportunity to share it with our regional bishop, Gary Koo, and uh, I kind of revealed the name on a Zoom call with a bunch of other rectors in the in the area. And they were kind of like, yeah, Chris, that, that works for you guys. Yeah, they were, they were positive. Uh, and then knowing that the person who actually names our parish is the Archbishop, of course. Uh, so Neil Atwood, our Archdeacon, uh, he said, Chris, it would be a smart thing not to go through this whole process and then ask the Archbishop at the end. You need to just check out with the Archbishop. Uh, so our Archbishop has indicated that he, uh, he thinks it's the superior name of the ones that we've kind of been discussing and uh, we're very happy to uh, change our name to Grace West Anglican Church uh, if the Parish Council so chose. So really that's where we are up to now, isn't it? Um, that we need to, we want to share this with the congregation uh, before we make a decision at Parish Council. So, you know, if someone can say, no, don't do this, it's a crazy idea or uh, just alert us to anything that the Parish Council should be part of. But the, the intention is to take this decision to Parish Council uh, and for us to request the Archbishop to change our name to Grace West Anglican Church. That's the, uh, this part in the process. And Trav, what happens from there uh, once we get the, the OK from the Archbishop? Uh, a lot of work that needs to be done. <laughs> Yep. yep, new website. I mean, John Marnie will finally have uh, an email address that reflects the yep. church he's part of, which will be great. Yeah, um, yeah, all of those things. I mean, one of the primary things, as we mentioned before, is making sure that that advertising goes up on Silverdale, so that um, you know we can prepare the community for the church that is coming there, and they know what the church is that's coming, Grace West Anglican Church. Um, yeah, so lots of things to be done and to be thinking about our, our church and the um, existing branding stuff that are there. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of work. <laughs> yeah, lots of things to go. So Grace West Anglican Church at Silverdale, Grace West Anglican Church here at Glenmore Park, and God willing, sometime down the track, uh, Grace West Anglican Church at Ludnam. Mm. Uh, and we have a you know, number of congregations working in partnership with one another uh, to reach uh, this part of Western Sydney with the grace of God. Thank you.